Okay, Chairman Campbell and Chairman Valentine, you're clear to proceed. Very good. Thank you very much, Mitch. I appreciate that. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. This is a, a great night for us. We're starting the first of what will hopefully be many years of a public hearing on the budget. Um, interested in hearing public comment, what people have to say. Always looking for ways to make the town better. So with that, I'd like to call the um, Board of Selectmen meeting to order. Um, I will defer to Chairman Valentine to call his meeting to order as well. Thank you, Don. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it is uh, Thursday, January 27th at approximately 5 p.m. And I am hereby calling the uh, Rockport Town Finance Committee um, <clears throat> meeting to order. Uh, and uh, as uh, Don has done, uh, I welcome uh, everyone here. Uh, we have a quorum, uh, and I think the entirety of the Finance Committee. Uh, we welcome the public and uh, look forward to a um, uh, constructive process. <clears throat> yes, we do. Very good. Thank you, Dwight. I appreciate that. Um, is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Uh, Paul, if you're doing that, you're muted. Can we unmute Paul, please? There you go. I mute Paul. That's that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so moved. Okay. Uh, is there a second? I'll second that. Motions made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson. Sarah's muted as well, Mitch, if you could. Hang on one second. <clears throat> Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, we, uh, bracket Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman uh, Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Uh, motion carries 5-0. With that, I'd like to read the posting that was in the Gloucester Times on the 21st of uh, this month. <clears throat> Town of Rockwood Board of Selectmen fiscal year 2023 budget hearing Thursday, January 27, 2022, 5 p.m. Public hearing on the fiscal year 23 operating and capital budgets will be held via Zoom, and the link is available on the posted meeting section of the Town Rockport Town of Rockport website, rockportma.gov. Board of Selectmen Donald J. Campbell Chair. That would be me. Um, and now with that, uh, Sarah is going to be joining us from a uh, an underground bunker, undisclosed location somewhere else, but she is participating in the meeting. Uh, so we will give her a little deference tonight for that. Uh, with that said, I think we've done all the housekeeping stuff. Uh, we're gonna start off with a little preview, uh, a, a dissertation from Mitch uh, and he'll go over it and then we'll have an opportunity for questions and then we will go to the public section. So with that, Mitch, please. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, just to start, as an overall summary, uh, particularly for uh, members of the Selectmen and the Finance Committee and those members of the public who were here uh, on Tuesday evening. Um, the majority of this will be the same. I will do a truncated version. Uh, however, uh, as I indicated in a message to the Finance Committee and the Selectmen, we have received the governor's budget, the uh, uh, what, what is termed the initial uh, cherry sheets from the Department of Revenue. So the finance director has gone in and entered the uh, correct and, and, and the first round of uh, cherry sheets for our local aid and our state assessments. So uh, when she did that, that yielded um, funding uh, of approximately $38,000. And the adjustments that you'll see in the budget, uh, besides this, the uh, local aid and the assessments, uh, reflect a distribution to that of $20,000 additional to the planning board purchase of services. $13,000 to the health insurance account and uh, $5,000 to the uh, labor reserve. Other than that, for those who are here Tuesday, all other materials will be the same. Uh, so again, I will give a truncated version of, uh, of information here. Um, the only department at this point that we will have give a, uh, a very brief summary will be the school department. Uh, others, we will, uh, I will walk through and um, we'll base it uh, the rest on, on questions. So again, uh, let me share the screen. Oh, 
Okay, can you see the uh, PowerPoint? We can. Okay, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Monty is gonna is assisting me as uh, the other host this evening. So uh, if we need to unmute any department heads or members, he'll be assisting. Thank you. <clears throat> so the FY23 budget process as discussed last time, um, starting with the growth and sustainability, we have certainly felt impacts relating to COVID in different ways. However, we have found ourselves in a quality position uh, going over this past year. Uh, the town has been busy, which has translated into um, strong returns relating to uh, hotels, motels, and our meals tax. Uh, our budget assumptions are indicated here, increasing the tax levy by the statutorily uh, uh, allowed amount, uh, the appropriate adjustments in local receipts, again, being conservative uh, on those as we have continued to be over the past several years. Uh, the uh, general uh, uh, unrestricted local government aid in chapter 70, uh, we have now adjusted, my apologies, that should be based on 23. Uh, now the governor's budget, we continue to maintain 8.5% of health insurance uh, increase pending further information in our final rate, which we hope to receive from uh, our health insurance vendor within the next two weeks. The general overview uh, for those who are unfamiliar with our process and who are just joining us for the first time tonight, looks like there's oh. one or two folks. Um, this is our budget process. We start out with guideline development, move into submittals, the finance director and I conduct a detailed review, brings us to where we are today, uh, recommendations to the Board of Selectmen and a public hearing. Uh, at the conclusion of the public hearing and after the appropriate deliberation, um, the Selectmen will vote on a budget that they deem to be appropriate to transmit to the Finance Committee. Transmittal will take place uh, Monday evening, January 31st in compliance with our town bylaws. And from there, uh, for the next approximately five, five or so weeks, Finance Committee will conduct its due diligence review, and then we will move into uh, annual town meeting. So the process does take off very quickly. Uh, we are joined this evening by uh, many of the department heads, and uh, so we are available to go over any questions that may come up from uh, Selectmen, Finance Committee, or members of the public at the appropriate time. The projected budget summary, again, we are presenting a budget of uh, approximately $38,564,498 uh, as the amalgamated amount for 5, 5A, B, and C. Again, this is subject to change based on the caveats that have been previously discussed and that you see on your screen. General fund budget is listed here and is broken out appropriately uh, by general government, by education, and then by our debt service obligations. You'll also see the uh, associated budgets for uh, water enterprise and sewer enterprise and the increases uh, for each of those. The budget, budgeted revenues listed here, again, are per the governor's proposal, which is um, colloqu colloquially called House 2. Uh, general uh, unrestricted aid has a $12,000 increase. Chapter 70 is $17,000 increase. Uh, the tax levy is listed here. That is unchanged from our Tuesday presentation. Uh, starting out with our prior year base, the 2.5% increase, the addition of the estimated new growth that comes from the Board of Assessors, and the review of our uh, exempt uh, debt service. Uh, local receipts, we are carrying, again, uh, approximately 10% increase over FY22 based on our review of uh, actuals received. Uh, again, we feel comfortable, yet we remain, um, we remain conservative, uh, appropriately conservative in those areas. Motor vehicle excise, again, continuing with our uh, revenues, uh, reflects a modest 3% increase over 22. Our other general revenue sources, uh, you can see what we are drawing from the ambulance reserve, the waterways reserve, and the parking fund. We continue to use no one-time revenues for recurring expenses. Any questions um, from Finance Committee or Selectmen on revenues? Nope. Nope, we're good. So I will move um, again fairly quickly through these other sections. We'll pause briefly at the school department for a, a approximate, you know, very brief summary from the superintendent on the school budget. And then we'll pick back up and work our way through the remaining town departments. So starting with departmental highlights, moderator, no change. Selectman reflects a $40,000 change for the conversion of the grant writer uh, to a full-time grants and special projects manager position 
and the inclusion of meeting support clerk coverage for boards, committees, and commissions. No changes associated with the selectmen committees, which is historical and uh, town art committee. Finance committee, we're carrying no change from 22. Town accountant is showing a $31,000 decrease based on contracted services reductions and board of assessors, no change. Treasurer, collector, and legal are both uh, level funded. Uh, human resources reflects a $5,000 increase, which is the uh, reference that I made at the beginning, additional $5,000 into the labor reserve. Uh, as we enter into a uh, collective bargaining cycle with two of our uh, general government units, AFSCME supervisors and foremen, and uh, AFSCME general unit, which covers um, DPW, library, and uh, clerical staff. Um, so we are holding, uh, you know, an additional amount associated with that, in addition to uh, a uh, non-union and a uh, already bargained collective bargaining agreement, COLA, of 2%. The is &T department reflecting a $155,000 increase over 22, including a new 0.5 support specialist uh, based on the uh, ongoing needs of that department and the uh, increased levels of support that they have taken on over the last several years as well as appropriate cost adjustments to reflect the ongoing expenses. Tax possessed land has no change. Town clerk elections and conservation commission also reflect uh, level funding. As do Millbrook uh, Meadow Committee, Rights of Way Committee and the Beautification Committee. Planning board reflects a $20,000 increase. Again, one of the items that I referenced at the beginning uh, this is reflective of uh, anticipated needs associated with um, uh, the uh, housing choice laws that are coming down. The town does not employ contractor or employee a, uh, a town planner. So this additional funding uh, will allow the planning mm -hmm. board to uh, bring in the necessary consultants uh, based on the, uh, the need, again, based on the housing uh, choice law uh, primarily that's in front of them. No changes uh, for Zoning Board of Appeals or the Community Development Department. Police Department uh, reflecting $148,000 increase over 22. That includes the conversion uh, from a police officer position to a full-time dispatcher um, and uh, a variety of collective bargaining increases and uh, general impacts associated with police reform. Traffic and parking reflects a $14,000 decrease from 22, uh, relating again to uh, the adjustments to the parking season. The chief was able to make the appropriate accommodations uh, based on that. And lifeguards is level funded. Fire and forest fire reflect no change. And ambulance reflects a modest change associated with fuel costs. Inspectional, ser inspectional services and animal inspector, uh, no change level funded. Emergency management reflects a $5,000 increase over 22 for costs uh, related to training and development for town employees. Animal control and parking clerk reflect no change. Harbor master and shellfish reflect a modest $500 increase relating to fuel costs. <clears throat> Harbor advisory committee uh, reflects uh, no change. Public works reflects an 8.76 percent increase over 22. Again, uh, as discussed on Tuesday, to more accurately reflect the ongoing needs and costs of the department and their support of uh, all facets of the community, uh, as well as the work that has been done to uh, uh, readjust the budget to ensure that it is, it is uh, in a more workable fashion and more workable structure, a bit more modernized the needs of the department. Rockport Public Schools, Superintendent Lebo, you want to give us a a very brief uh, overview. Well, just, just one tab. Uh, got screen share rights, do I? Yep. All right. So as an overview page of Rupper Public Schools budget for FY23, the 2022-23 school year, uh, the operating budget uh, is 15,456,256. That represents a 3% increase that meets the 
existing town school model that has been in effect for a number of years represents a additional request for that operating budget of $450,173. The town base contribution in the town school model yeah, is seven. set at 2.3. That okay. is if health insurance does not increase over 5%, that would, if it was 2.3, create a base increase of 13612540 which would be an additional 306049 to the base. Now, right now, the, the budget that's being presented until health insurance comes in reflects an 8.5% projected increase in health insurance. So uh, Carrie sent us a little calculation the other day that shows the change in a proposed town base by the town school model, assuming it was 8.5%. Uh, the bottom line is that the base would be reduced from 306.049 down to 188.057. And that would be reflective of a 1.4% uh, increase in the town base due to the fact that the town model requires us to share the difference between the increased costs of 8.5 to 5% for our employees. And we represent 68% of the town's health insurance uh, liability. Uh, the major changes and highlights in the budget, there are negotiated salary changes for union contracts of 2.5%. There are no staffing or programmatic additions. There are no major changes in expense lines. And a matter of fact, if we get into it later with any questions, most of the expense lines have been reduced. The real trigger in this budget is the special education tuition increase that is 335,251 and a transportation increase of $97,064 for a total uh, special education cost center increase of 447,101. And if you reflect back to the entire budget increase, operating budget is 451.73. That basically takes up that entire amount. Uh, we do have a request for a SPED reserve transfer this year of 203294 and I don't think we'll talk about the CIPC requests right now. So that's a, a quick overview. I'm willing to go into any of the detail later on if there are any questions. Great. Thank you, Rob. We appreciate that. Um, are there any questions from, uh, from any of the department heads or anybody here? on this. We're going to open it up to a general public forum shortly, but are there any questions here from Selectman or FinCom? Nope, doesn't sound that way. Um, while we're on the schools, go ahead, Mitch, you were going to say something? Hey, I'm just, when, at you. when you're um, when you're ready, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I'm standing by just to cover those last couple of departments. Okay, I, well, I just want to stay on the schools for one second. Um, and uh, again, we have um, Dr. Branco, our incoming superintendent. Um, I didn't give him an opportunity to say hello. And I think this might be a good opportunity because these are all the major department heads here. Uh, Monty, could you unmute Dr. Dr. Branco real quick and just let him say hello and introduce himself to uh, all the folks he's going to be dealing with for a very long time, hopefully. Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me, Mr. Chair? We can. Go ahead, please. Welcome to Rockwood, Dr. Brown. Thank you. I apologize for being off camera. I'm actually uh, at this meeting and uh, stepping out of another meeting uh, in order to uh, to make sure I'm paying attention here tonight. So thank you very much. I'm very, very excited uh, to join the team in Rockport. Um, Superintendent Lebo has been unbelievable already, uh, working me through the transition and giving me quite the tutorial on the community and the school district. Um, so it's, it's a very proud community. I'm proud to uh, represent the school district soon. And uh, thank you very much for welcoming me into the community. And I look forward to meeting everybody face to face as I start the transition with the help of Rob over the next couple of months. That's great. Thank you so much. Glad to have you. And again, welcome to Rockport. Thank you. Sir. Um, you're very welcome. OK, um, so with that, Mitch, please continue. OK, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Board of Health, Council on Aging and Veteran Services remain level funded. The public library reflects an $18,000 increase. Um, again, there are uh, uh, materials requirements and uh, uh, other additional uh, requirements associated with that increase. 
Bachelor's Island reflects a $3,000 increase uh, based on the increased number of trips that we anticipate going to the island. Strait Smith Island and Memorial Day Parade Committee reflect no change. <clears throat> Contributory retirement reflects $153,000 increase over FY22. Uh, that amount is uh, basically uh, 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 charged to us by uh, Essex Regional Retirement. Unemployment reflects no change at this time. Group health insurance is holding an approximate 8.5% uh, increase. Um, again, we hope to have a better number associated with that within the next two weeks. FICA and Medicare, again, it is a, a, a percentage of our labor costs, 1.45% of our labor costs. So that does uh, adjust. Currently, it's got a, approximately $2,200 increase associated with it. We have no, no change in sick leave buyback and uh, no change in our general liability, uh, property and casualty insurance uh, uh, lines. Community Preservation Committee, uh, that operating funding, uh, which is equivalent to Article 5C, $120,000 associated with the debt transfer from CPC funds to the general fund and a uh, $30,000 uh, operating account. Water enterprise funding uh, reflects a 4.67% increase. Uh, as the assistant director indicated at the last meeting, uh, we continue to uh, have increasing uh, costs associated with uh, chemical purchases uh, throughout. And our sewer enterprise fund has approximately um, $2 million, uh, a 0.01% decrease from FY22, in essence, uh, roughly level funded. That covers operating. Mr. Chair, I'll move through uh, capital. So general fund, we'll start out with the borrowing articles. Again, $450,000 for um, door replacements and window restoration and or replacement at Town Hall, the Annex and Central Fire and Ambulance. Again, uh, as I indicated on Tuesday, we are in uh, uh, you know, Pretty desperate need to get those these doors updated in these different facilities. Same with the windows, um, uh, issues associated with energy, um, and you know we've got some safety issues. So, for example, central fire and ambulance; uh, those doors stick pretty regularly. I know I went over to ambulance to look at something with uh, DPW yesterday, and I had to go in through the bay door because the the, the other door simply wouldn't open; it was stuck. They're wooden doors with wooden frames, and uh, it's not helpful for any of us. And again, the windows. Um, are in need of restoration where they can be and where they can't be, uh, they need to be replaced. Again, we're looking at uh, prolonging the life on our facilities and it is time uh, to, to take that step forward for that. General fund free cash, as you see on your screen, $75,000 for the school auditorium lighting upgrade, addressing a safety issue with uh, the, the, the panel uh, uh, for the lighting controls. $37,000 for Jaws of Life replacement assigned to the Pigeon Cove Engine Company. $142,000 for fire turnout gear that does expire. Uh, it has a 10-year shelf life, and when that does expire, that poses a, uh, a liability uh, risk for the community and for our firefighters. And $278,000 for breathing apparatus, the air tanks, and the associated equipment. $175,000 for the annual is &T program. $20,000 for the North Basin gangway replacement under the jurisdiction of the Harbor Masters. $75,000 for the elementary school gym floor replacement. It's an in-kind replacement uh, with the floor that's currently there. Uh, $24,000 for streetlight conversion further behind the scenes work uh, on that particular project conversion to LED. It is not the purchase of the lights themselves. $124,000 for two DPW vehicles. Uh, $164,000 uh, from the general fund, uh, one third uh, cost uh, for a Vactor utilities truck purchase, $40,000 from the deep for a replacement of the DPW maintenance van, $52,000 for security upgrades at Central Fire and Ambulance, and $33,000 for security upgrades phase one uh, at the public library. $110,000 withdrawal from the parking meter fund for the annual replacement of a police cruiser and a replacement of a special services vehicle, um, uh, which is the pickup truck that is assigned to the police department, a heavy use vehicle. 
Moving into water enterprise, borrowing in the amount of $264,000, $210,000 for the rapid sand filtration, basin repairs, and valve upgrades that is showing um, uh, extreme wear uh, on, on that basin. Uh, there's spalling with the concrete and a number of other issues, and the valves do degrade over time and do require replacement. And $54,000 for the dissolved air flotation mixer motors and valves. Again, same thing, these are running um, uh, constantly, they have heavy use, and there is a, uh, an obligation to replace those to ensure that we have uh, continued uh, uh, safe operation of our water treatment facility. Water enterprise free cash uh, usage in the amount of $317,944, $20,000 to uh, security upgrades at the treatment plant, $108,000 uh, going into the uh, master capital account for water treatment, which again is the account that we're able to draw from for capital issues that do come up throughout the year. $25,000 in supplemental funding for the replacement of the PLC controls for the uh, DAF plant. The current uh, system is utilizing 1997 technology and is uh, past its useful life. The water enterprise one third cost share uh, of the uh, Vector Utilities vehicle uh, rounds out water free cash. Moving to sewer, uh, sewer enterprise borrowing in the amount of $1 million for additional and ongoing work associated with uh, remediation and elimination of inflow and infiltration, uh, referred to as INI &I work. And free cash usage in the amount of $428,000. $55,000 for treatment plant security upgrades, $164,000 rounding out the uh, final one third cost of the Vector Utilities truck, $72,000 to the master capital account, $50,000 covering uh, pump station upgrades at Long Beach and Marmion Way, and $87,000 covering pump station upgrades at Dock Square. So that is the uh, high level overview of what we spent about two hours and 40 minutes on on Tuesday. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'm gonna go back up to the top and am happy to uh, accept any questions at this time. Uh, if we could start with Selectman and Finance Committee for anything that we have you. Of course, we'll do, let's do uh, Selectman FinCom and then we'll go to department heads if they have anything else to add. Um, so from Selectman so from and FinCom. Selectman and FinCom. We good? We're getting a little feedback. Okay. Uh, any questions uh, from the? Uh, it's, I don't. Why, I don't. Is it me or am I? So, no. Hold, hold on. So Don Southard, if you could um, just turn off your computer volume. All right. Let's see if that works. Let's try it again. There we go. Okay. Okay. That's great. Okay. There's two devices. So, that's fine. So with that, um, and I can't see everybody. Mitch, do we still need the screen share? Because I can't see. I guess I'll just throw it out there. Um, any questions from FinCom or the Board of Selectmen? No, i just say a quick statement, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to thank Mitch Vieira uh, for uh, doing a terrific job uh, putting this all together along with the other department heads. Uh, it was very well uh, received on uh, Tuesday. It was concise and right right to the point. I was particularly pleased to see that uh, uh, because of tourism and bringing people into Rockport and restaurants mm -hmm. and hotels, that uh, that has helped us during the pandemic. That's a very encouraging uh, situation in my mind because I think we need to, uh, you know, that's our big number one industry that we have here in town. So that, that was, I was very pleased to see that. Uh, the budget is uh, straightforward, right to the point. There's been some increases in, in some departments, but also a, a number of departments that uh, decrease their budget, which, which is, I think is terrific. So uh, again, a lot of this I heard on Tuesday, but I was happy to be here. And, and uh, um, I think uh, we're, in a, we're, in a, we're in good shape moving forward. I agree, excellent comments. Thank you, uh, Selectman Murphy. Um, you know, everybody did a great job staying within budget, even reductions in a lot. So I think uh, we're, we're on we're on a good track here. We're on a very good track. Uh, other comments? Selectman FinCom. Mitch, I can't see everybody, so you'll have to let me know. Sure. Uh, any questions, FinCom or Selectman, for any of the departments or areas that uh, have been covered? Nope. Okay. Nope. 
All right. So with that, let's go to uh, town department heads. Is there anything anybody would like to add? Uh, DPW, police, fire, uh, emergency services of any kind. A anybody like to add anything in? Again, Mitch, just let me know. I can't see everybody. Sure. I don't see uh, any takers right now, Mr. Chair, but uh, I know they are all standing by uh, for any questions that come from the public. Good. Okay. So with that, let's open it up to the public. Um, and let's have, uh, let's see if you, you, you can give them the spiel, Mitch, go ahead and raise sure. function and all that. Okay. If you'd like to speak, please use the hand raise function or raise your hand in your video. When you're recognized, please uh, state your name and address. Toby, you're unmuted. Thank you. Toby Arseni in 95 Granite street. Uh, I'm the evil pest who asked for the public hearing and, uh, now you're doing it. And I thank you very much. I hope it's going to be, uh, uh, a polar opposite of the uh, planning board last night uh, where no one was allowed to go on for more than three minutes. And are you going to uh, go through scrolling through the items as you just did so that we can uh, ask our questions about particular things? Uh, I think that would be the helpful way um, to do it if you actually want people to ask questions rather than say it, you've done it. Uh, one other comment to start with, and that is that uh, Mitch and Carrie, on the selectmen's behalf, have put an enormous amount of effort into coming up with a budget, which the Finance Committee will now further struggle with. But uh, the whole point is a, a balanced budget. And uh, a couple of years bef ago, before the Wuhan uh, flu, uh, some woman uh, much concerned about the welfare of the elderly got up and offered an amendment to take $50,000 out of the school's budget and plug it into the Council on Aging. And the moderator allowed that motion. Uh, that was a, a, a radical departure. In the past, uh, you were only allowed to vote a maximum of what was there. And it makes a mockery of your efforts to balance a budget. And whatever the ruling is from the moderator, we're all owed the information. It needs to be out in public. It needs to be uh, from the tree housetops and in the booklet, uh, whether you're allowed to make such motions and under what circumstances. Because if that's the way it carries on, uh, you put everything into the apple cart and shortly it's all over the street. So I hope you'll get the answers to that, that question. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate the comments. And Toby, you know, this was, you know, you make a lot of suggestions, some we like, quite honestly, some we don't. This was one that I think was was great. And I, I, I commend you for making that and that suggestion. And I'm glad that this will become hopefully part of the whole budget process going forward. So thank you. Um, so, Toby, um, you're still unmuted. Are there any general questions that you have while you're uh, recognized before? Oh, we oh I could control? start. I could start at, at the beginning, um, going back a long way. Um, yep, uh, ISNT, we've got a $155,000 increase. Uh, and I don't know whether, I think it's on the capital though, uh, which we haven't yet come to. Oh, we have that. Um, last year, we voted uh, $150,000 for uh, IT technology capital and website upgrade. And uh, now we're again being told of a website out upgrade. And I'm computer illiterate, but I hear lots of mutterings and gnashing of teeth. And so have we had the upgrade and we're now doing another, or are we now going to have uh, a wholly new upgrade? And please uh, beg uh, Mr. Uh, please beg Monty uh, not to permanently mute me for asking such questions. So I'll, I'll, I'll jump in uh, before we uh, kick over to Monty on that. So the uh, $155,000 increase that's reflected in the budget does not relate to the website in, in the sense of another new update. We have ongoing costs associated with maintaining a new website, with maintaining additional software services associated with the website. So for example, in addition to the website, uh, which already has been funded uh, in overhaul, we are adding, uh, we've added in several additional pieces to further enhance the uh, outreach and the customer service piece. So for example, we have additional uh, software components, the C-Click Fix software, which we've added, which is a, uh, a, a reporting software 
for those who uh, utilize smartphones or those devices to share information directly with us. We have also added in a component called Civic Clerk, which is specifically set up to manage our meeting postings and our meeting minutes in a way that is user friendly. And we've also added in additionally funding related to, excuse me, a portion of the software related to uh, Civic HR, which will transition our hiring processes and our application processes from paper to virtual and will include the associated workflows. So uh, no longer will we have issues with, hey, I dropped an application off here, there, or everywhere. It'll all be through this workflow system now for, for our departments. Uh, all of those come with ongoing costs, but uh, in, in the name of making sure that we have an appropriate level and we are meeting expectations of the community for our customer service uh, standards. So um, on the capital side, there is an annual amount of money that is allocated for, for IS and T costs because there are constant and ongoing needs related to technology. There's life cycling for equipment that we have in place. There are new needs that come up throughout the school year. I know that, you know, myself and I, I can speak for Rob a little bit on this. There's always something that is coming up on the technology side of the house that we could not uh, properly plan for ahead of time. So this ensures that we are able to respond appropriately and in a timely manner. Does that answer your question, Toby? Uh, it's more than I can absorb. Thank you. Should I go on with my concerns or do you want to switch to somebody else and come back to me? I have lots of concerns. Well, Mitch, who do we have in the, do we have more in the queue for questions? There are not currently any other hands. Oh, there's one other, Mr. Chair, uh, Mary All right, S. Well, all right, that we'll, we'll go to Mary in a second. Um, Toby, I'm going to give you as much time as I can. And then depending upon how it goes, uh, maybe I'll even come back to you if that's, if that's okay. And to answer your question or to your statement that you made, because you weren't on mute, I heard you and it's okay. Um, the questions that you asked that I didn't give you an answer to should be addressed to Bob Bisnick because he's the one that's going to set um, the, the tone for that meeting. So I would suggest you having a, a conversation with Mr. Bisnick. Well, I find that hard to accept because it affects every single thing in the budget uh, when it comes to the town meeting. It, it's not my question. It's everyone's question. Uh, should I go on? Uh, Please I'm go right ahead. I'm concerned about uh, the the sewer borrowing one million for uh, the I and I, and every year when we get to the town meeting, I want to know uh, how much we spent over the past five years, how much we're going to spend over the next five years. Um, those questions, and also the one that that makes it real to to the voters, which is the percentage increase uh, if we vote it on on the rates, uh, not the you know, pennies per gallon, which is meaningless to people, but, but the percentage increase. So there's that. And I see that for uh, the capital, we're um, doing pumping stations at um, Old Garden and at Long Beach. And I'm incredulous that we've lumped Long Beach in with the rest of the sewer enterprise system. Uh, when we first uh, paid for the Long Beach sewer, it was on the um, express uh, assurance that it was all separate and to be paid for entirely by the users. So I want to know if the bills that go out to them, uh, the money that comes back to the town, is that going into the general fund or is that going into the sewer enterprise fund? And it seems to me that it's not just a question of, of whether it is appropriate. Uh, I would think the Department of Revenue should be called on to weigh in on whether it's even legal, because I don't believe it is. And if it is legal, we're in for a terrible jolt ahead, because Gloucester is in the process of building a new sewage treatment plant. They hope with a lot of aid at a price tag of something like $100 million. And obviously, if our sewer enterprise fund is picking up the cost for the Long Beach sewer, rather than the Long Beach tenants footing the bill themselves, which would be the proper course, then we're all in for uh, hard times. So can you get those facts on how the money um, comes in, goes out, and check with DOR on the legalities of it? As, I think as far as DOR and that, I told you, to me, that's something that I'm not sure if that's a function of the Board of Selectmen to do. 
Um, I mean, if Mitch wants to do that, then that's fine. But it seems like there's some homework that, that perhaps you could do on that uh, to make that a, so, a better process. Mitch, so, Mr. Ahead. Chair, I, I would say that um, as, a, as a standing rule and requirement, particularly associated with our financial operations, we always operate in compliance with all general laws. Um, Carrie has that on, on repeat uh, you know, with all of her staff all the time. Uh, everything is done in compliance with mass general law, rule, regulation, or otherwise. Um, and they are very diligent about that. It is also regularly and annually reviewed by our outside auditors. Um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly uh, look into the questions relating to the percentages and, and, and what that would mean when the rate setting process takes place. Um, but as far as legality of, of operating, uh, you know, I, I feel comfortable in saying that our financial operations are uh, acting within uh, mass general law. Very good. Uh, I, I certainly hope so. I'll get it on paper uh, for the town meeting article so that you can get it to town council so that we can see it. Uh, I see $24,000 for more for lead lights, but this is not to buy the lights. And we voted 16800 if I'm correct, last year. Uh, at what point are we committed to buying the actual lights? The question being, does this commit us to the lights? Because we were promised a demonstration of the lights before we signed off on them, and the demonstration has yet to occur. So if we vote the 24,000, are we committed? No, you're not. Thank you. That's what I'd hope to hear. Uh, and every year in the IS&T budget, you know, there are all sorts of categories that mean nothing to a layman, even one uh, familiar with computers, which I'm not. Are we paying for more cameras, security cameras, and if so, where? Uh, same thing for the police budget. Security cameras are, uh, in this particular case, included in the capital project. They are a part of the security upgrades for the uh, water treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant, and central fire and ambulance headquarters. They are a portion of those requests. I see. And will there be warning signs to go with them that people are under surveillance? They will, as is the case in, in all of our facilities now that have cameras, including the schools, there is signage before you enter any of these areas that says uh, you are uh, under uh, video only surveillance. Uh, I'm, I'm still very much opposed to cameras, but I think that's half a step in the right direction. Uh, okay, I'm going blank mentally. Oh, the schools. Yes, yes, the big ticket item. Every year I want to know, and uh, people generally should want to know, uh, what percentage of the school's budget is going for the special ed expenses? And we all understand it's not a choice. So the percentage. And again, my statement as every year that they, the school committee, owe us, the voters who are footing the bill, a resolution to the honorables, Tar and Ferranti and the governor saying that as an unfunded mandate, it's simply rotten and that they're responsible for all of the expenses. So uh, please put it to the schools that we're owed uh, such a resolution for the town meeting, for the town meeting, not their resolution. And uh, what is the percentage figure? Also, uh, just after the override last year, uh, I'm not sure on the time sequence here, and it's sort of unfortunate and sticky. Uh, they got 900 and either 40 or 60 thousand dollars of the federal government's ill-gotten largesse, uh, not from the town meeting. And uh, mm -hmm. certainly, the finance committee is greatly concerned with the offsets. That's the money that we don't give them, but they get from the state. So I think we're owed an accounting of how the 940 or 60 thousand dollars was spent. Um, in in um, such a form that somebody who was uninformed would have some grasp of what the money actually went for. Um, and absent such an accounting, which I realize is not part of the budget process, um, but is part of their overall finance, uh, I don't see why we should be voting 3% uh, for them uh, when other departments are level funded. So I hope we'll get such an accounting. Will you see to it, please? Mr. Chair, uh, School Superintendent Lebo is unmuted. Very uh, good. Thank you, as I knew he would be. Rob, go ahead. 
Actually, Toby, the answer to your first question is special education makes up 35.15% of the uh, operating budget. And um, I would be prepared to show you the ESSER funding. It's actually, when you said 900 and some thousand, that's only one piece of the ESSER money. It's called ESSER 3. It was an ESSER 2 and an ESSER 1. ESSER uh, 1 was, I uh, believe, in the $80,000 range. ESSER 2 was 145. And ESSER 3, which all came about as a result of the pandemic, was the 900 and I believe it was 45,000 that you talked about. You'd have to add all those together to get your total ESSER money that flowed to the school as it did to all schools. The, the trick of that money is it was specifically dedicated to supplement and not supplant a regular budget. It was not supposed to replace anything in your budget. It was supposed to be dedicated specifically to help out the young people that spent now two years in an educational environment that is far from the normal situation. Uh, in Rockport, they spent a majority of the year at home, learning on Zoom with their parents trying to teach them. And that money was used, and I can show you the spreadsheet, I'm sure uh, the entire crowd here needs to go through that exercise, but I, I, I'm prepared to do that. It's been added to my spreadsheet. And what that money was used for was mostly staffing of bringing in extra counselors for kids that are having social emotional needs more than you can even imagine in the situation they're in with the uncertainties and the unknown. And also to bring in what's called recovery and acceleration specialists that are meant to get kids back on track after having two years of their educations to be set back. So uh, I didn't, I haven't done the percentage, I probably should. I'm supposed to have a math background, but two of their years out of their 13 years of, of schooling have not been in the regular format. So that money was intended specifically to supplement and not supplant. You could not go and fund regular items through that. You had to fund things above and beyond, and you had to show that it, it directly addressed the pandemic needs of the the children in the Commonwealth and all across this country. So I, I can show you how it was divvied up. It also wasn't intended to be spent in one year. It was intended to last across a three year period of time. So if one spent that all in one year or used it to defray their budget, they would be uh, really breaking the pact with the government that it was supposed to be something that flowed directly to kids for a three year period of time. We spent about 500 and I believe it was 68,000 of that 1.5 million that was available for this particular year, saving another 500 or so thousand for year two, and then the remainder for that year three. We think our needs in year three won't be as dramatic, but um, I'm, I'm going to tell you, as a 44-year veteran of schools, I have never seen the situation that young people, not just in Rockport, but everywhere have had to endure, as have all the adults. But for young people at an important time of their lives, uh, that money was a godsend to get them back on track so they could move forward with their lives, just as everybody else has done on, on this screen. So I'm a little emotional about that. And I know you didn't mean it to be accusatory. You wanted it informational. And that's as straight and informational as I possibly can give it. It was a supplement, not a supplant, designed to go across three years and spent directly on kids to catch them up is the summary of that. So uh, with that, um, if there's any follow-up, Toby, I'd be glad to answer it for yeah. you. Uh, yes. Person. Uh, thank you very much. That was most informative. Uh, would it be possible to put some or all of that with some figures in the school's report for the uh, annual booklet? It would reassure people. People are uh, and reasonably suspicious of how federal funds have been spent. Uh, going on to another subject, uh, may I? The uh, community development uh, budget, um, I got a copy of that. I've already mislaid it. Um, there's $25,000 in there for something called purchase of services. And I think that is although it probably isn't intended so somewhat deceptive. That's, I believe, 
uh, from last year, what I was told, to hire someone, uh, namely Michelle Brown, uh, who is uh, also uh, head of the cultural district. And that was, I believe, for outreach to uh, local businesses, uh, if I've got that right from last year. And that may or may not be an, something that's advantageous uh, for the local businesses. Uh, you may or may not think it a good thing, a matter of opinion, but it's not properly an expense for the town of Rockport. It's an expense for what would be the Chamber of Commerce. So I want some confirmation on what, how that money is spent. Is that all salary or what? There was also an item in there for 2500 I believe, for uh, housing expenses. Well, we have no housing trust. We have nothing ongoing. What is the intention uh, on spending that money? And could it, for instance, uh, be handed out to Action or Harbor Light? Are there any restrictions on how it's spent? Mr. Chair, the, the $25,000 in purchase of services covers the costs associated with the, the contractor that the town hires as a community engagement consultant. It is uh, purposefully and aptly named community engagement consultant because it is not simply business or business development. There are a variety of roles associated, responsibilities associated with that consulting role. Um, so $25,000 covers those services. That also covers our online presence and um, uh, interacting with a variety of different stakeholders, not just the uh, business community. And the cultural district obviously is a separate charge, uh, not listed, in, not indicated in that, uh, in that line. The $2,500 for housing initiation expenses has been carried in that uh, location for approximately six years. Um, you know, we, we actually are at a point uh, interacting with the planning board where uh, there is discussion and forward movement uh, relating to a housing production plan and the housing choice legislation. So I do anticipate that there will be some usage of that funding in this upcoming fiscal year. Uh, that doesn't quite answer it. Could it be handed out to uh, some uh, nonprofit outfit. So the town already uh, does issue a grant to action and other nonprofits. There are needs that the town itself actually does need to fulfill, and this funding is associated with that. There is already grant funding that is issued to nonprofits uh, that specifically relates to, to some of those services. Very good. Thank you. Uh, all right, Toby, I'm going to hold you right there if that's okay. I want to get Fine. to another. And then you can come back if you'd like, if we don't have a lot of people here, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's go to Mary S, please. That's Z. Zenus, okay? Yeah. Z Seppel on 92 Granite Street. Uh, am I on? You are, Zenus. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions, or really rather a comment and then a question. And part of it does refer to what Mr. Arsinian brought up as to last night's hearing before the planning board. Uh, I went over to the uh, town hall to get the uh, proposed zoning changes, which was quite an extensive, I don't know, inch and a quarter thick put packet. Uh, and uh, I couldn't honestly make too much sense out of it. Uh, but what I wanted to act about is that uh, it's great to have tonight's hearing uh, we're allowing as much time as possible to uh, uh, let the public uh, state their concerns. Last night uh, at the planning board, it was emphatically stated that each participant from the public would be given one three minute session to ask all their questions and no more. I bring that up because it's an extensive uh, proposal that I think many people might have future questions on. The time to do it was last night, not at perhaps town meeting. Uh, when uh, that proposal and uh, policy was instituted, maybe six or seven years ago, I asked why they were limiting such uh, comment to only one three minute period. And I was told the model was the state house procedures for public hearings when maybe 500 or 1,000 people show up to protest some kind of law or comment on it. Anyway, that's what we've got with our planning board now, one three minute period. So the thing is, if anybody in the public or any other town board 
has a question before them, I would suggest they wait until the very end so that they can uh, think what everybody else has said and maybe comprehend everybody's opinion before they get their one chance to speak. Thank you. Now, as Thank far you. as the good question, uh, the uh, thing that bothered me about, uh, or not bothered me, but I wanted to have some questions answered. On the capital improvement $24,000 uh, uh, budget for the streetlight conversion, uh, last week, the Board of Selectmen hosted a meeting with the Green Community uh, uh, Task Force, and we were told that there was a 6000 figure or a $360,000 figure, and now we're seeing, in actuality, a $24,000 uh, uh, budget, and uh, I don't know what that's for, would like to know what it's for, and primi primarily also, uh, it seemed to me that these types of things must have some kind of a contractual arrangement where if National Grid is telling you something and you go on for, and, and, and accept, their, uh, accept their proposals, then th it's National Grid that has a responsibility to, to keep the town informed about what the costs are. And it just doesn't seem to me like that happened. So if, if Mitch can answer that or somebody can answer that, uh, I'm listening. Hey, Mr. Chair, the, uh, they, they are two distinct uh, amounts of money. The $18,000 um, that was first approved in the $24,000, which is in front of the, uh, the, the board for consideration this evening is for additional work behind the scenes and preparatory work moving that project forward. The 350 or $60,000 number uh, is, is separate and distinct, and that is associated with the cost of actually purchasing the lights. And that's something that, that would be able to be considered once some of this additional work is done. So this is part of further um, preparatory and behind the scenes work uh, associated with that project. It is not um, the, the purchase, and there is still that much larger cost uh, that is yet to be uh, debated and discussed the committee is working with the finance director to uh, review the viability of um, some financing options that they have put forward. Very good, Zenas. Do you have anything else? So uh, this uh, twenty-four thousand dollars, Mitch, then is just uh, necessary to further the process along to a point where sometime we'll make a decision on the 360,000. That is correct. This is not uh, anything that, that, that binds to, to saying yes or no to that. Uh, it's further preparatory work. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Zenas. I appreciate it. Um, do we have any other public comments? If anybody else wishes to speak, please oh. use the hand raise function or raise your hand in your video. Mitch, if you don't get anybody else, just go right back to Toby. Yep. If anybody else wishes to speak, please use the hand raise function or please raise your hand in your video. Okay, I don't see any other takers. Mr. Chair, Toby Arsenian is unmuted. Thank you, Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. I'm sure I'm forgetting half a dozen things. Uh, I'd hoped you were going to scroll through it, but you're doing uh, vastly better than the uh, planning board, and I thank you. Uh, there was $30,000 mentioned at some point for the Community Development Committee, and ordinarily I thought we voted all of their money. Uh, I understand we have to mo vote money to fund the debt, but what was the $30,000 for? I thought by statute they got to spend a certain percentage of their total budget uh, on, on administrative uh, expenses. So is this in addition to that? What is the 30,000? The $30,100 is their administrative operating expenses. So we can, uh, am I correct that we can vote for that or not? Uh, before it they had said that, that their administrative expenses uh, came out of state law and, and no one could touch it. Which is it? So it's an appropriation at town meeting and, and, and it's in front of town meeting. So you could at that time vote up or down. Uh, I, you know, I certainly can't go into the legalities of what may be behind it, but it does require appropriation at town meeting. 
I see. Uh, it's my feeling that yes. they've abused their powers with the administrative funds. I understand that they're within the letter of the law, but the letter of the law is not the same thing as fair and square or, uh, or the operation of a democracy. And spending uh, the sum of $9,950 on uh, what are in fact projects, whether or not they're called uh, studies or anything else, you can call them bicycles or turnips if you like, uh, circumvents the town meeting. So I think that that's an, an improper way of spending administrative funds and I would like to uh, see their uh, funds docked. I guess I have the option of, of offering amendments. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, is that all you have, Toby? Did you have yes, any more? Yes, thank, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, okay, do we have anybody else, Mitch, for public comment? Anybody else wishes to speak and share public comment relating to the operating and capital budgets for fiscal year 23? Please raise your hand in your video or use the hand raise function. Last call. I don't see any takers, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, at this point, I think we're gonna go, are there any other, let me throw it back to department heads and um, um, uh, sorry, to the Board of Selectmen and FinCom after hearing everything, does anybody want to have, uh, make any comments on that? Nope, okay. So we now will go to a motion, I believe. Correct, Mitch? Uh, that's correct, Mr. Chair. If there's no further public comment, I'd ask that you please close the public hearing. Very good. Let's do that. So is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll offer a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Very good. Motions made and seconded uh, for the discussion. Hearing none. And just so folks know, uh, Selectman Murphy had to step out. He had a family obligation. So he is not with us, so we're down to four. Um, so I see Sarah is still with us from the bunker, so she's still good. Uh, roll call vote, Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectman Wilkinson. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. The public hearing is now closed. Um, from that, we will now move to the uh, deliberation side of this. Um, unless there's anything else, Mitch? I uh, know, Mr. Chair. So at this time, you have in front of you uh, my recommended uh, budget for operating and capital based on the work of the department heads, the finance director. And uh, again, I express my thanks to all of them for their hard work. Uh, you have uh, the recommendations in front of you, which you uh, certainly can adopt or uh, edit as you deem appropriate. Great. Thank you. And I, I echo your sentiment. Uh, thank you to all department heads for working so diligently and carefully in these troubled times. So thank you. Um, so I, I think, you know, we've gone through, we've had this stuff for a while. Um, we have, I don't know if Zenas's hand is just up by accident or not, but the public hearing is closed on this. Um, I don't know if, if we've had a chance to go through this quite a bit. We've all had conversation. We've now had two meetings. Uh, I, I think we're good on our end, unless anybody from the board of selectmen has anything else to say. Uh, this is something that only concerns the Board of Selectmen right now. Um, is there any from the, anybody from the board that wants to make any changes, amendments, suggestions? Okay, no, hearing. No, nope, everybody's good. Okay, good. Uh, so hearing none, let's, uh, is there a motion to consider the approval of the fiscal year operating capital budgets and financial message and plan? Please go right ahead. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the F, uh, FY 2023 operation and capital budget as recommended by the town administrator and transmit it to the finance committee. Very good. Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Motion's made and seconded. Further discussion on this? Hearing Everything none. Looks great. Good. Thanks, Sarah. Um, hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. FinCom, take it away. It's all yours right now. So you guys can uh, do what you need to do to it. So, right. Mr. Chair, we will, uh, on the board's behalf, transmit to the Finance Committee on Monday evening once we get uh, 
make sure everything is all cleaned up and ready to go. We will transmit revenues, expenses, your budget message, and uh, the capital projects for the finance committee's consideration. That's Thank fantastic. you for your uh, review the last two evenings. No, no problem. Thank you for, for the work. You know, I really, I, I want to give a special thanks to Mitch because, I, you know, I talk to Mitch probably a half a dozen times a day to his chagrin. Um, and it's interrupting a lot of his work all the time. And I know how busy he is with this stuff. Um, he, uh, to say he does yeoman's work on this is an, the understatement of the year. So thank you, Mitch. Thank you. It's a true team effort with the finance director and all of our department heads. And I uh, certainly appreciate that. I know it is. Thank you. Um, and I will, uh, I think at that point, we're done on our end. Uh, uh, Fincom, uh, Dwight, I'll throw it back over to you. Um, anything from, from you folks? Uh, we don't have anything to consider at this time. And uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Very good. We'll take it on. We'll go to the, we'll do board of selectmen first, and then we'll close you folks out if that's okay. Great. Great. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn the board of selectmen meeting? You are in the meeting now. There are I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you, Herm. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. Motion's made and seconded. You Further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectwoman Wilkinson. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. This closes out the Board of Selectmen meeting. Dwight, go ahead. Yes, do we have a, well, I'll reiterate the, that we need a motion to adjourn. Uh, can someone offer that, please? So moved. Motion. Great, thank you. Uh, roll call, Tom Barrett. Aye. Paul DeRosier. Aye. Sal DiStefano. Aye. Carl Engel. Aye. Keith Ritchie. Aye. Aye. Don Aye. Southerd. Aye. Aye. Maureen Wessel. I'm not sure that she's with us. And I vote aye as well. We are adjourned. Thank you, Dwight. And thank you to everybody, again, department heads, uh, members of the public, everybody, we're looking forward to uh, a great town meeting. And uh, thank you all for being here tonight. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.